The law requires that an, advise, an environmental commission is advisory. Um, they advise the planning board, they advise the, the township committee, they, but they do not have the ability to make policy or make law in their township. Um, the environmental commissions are appointed by the mayor. Lots of times the township committee or council will have input on that. And we certainly hope that residents will have input on that. Um, we suggest the environmental commissions, we wanna get the best people appointed. So we ask that, um, you know, somehow there's a sign up list because we don't like just to see, oh, well, this, they, they might say, oh, there's only one, week, one meeting a month that you have to go to, that's all it is. But anyone that's ever served on an environmental commission or a green team knows that there's a whole lot more to it. So we really want to get people that are dedicated, that really care about their local environment, and that have vision for the future. Um, as I said, unlike the planning boards and zoning boards uh, and boards of adjustments, environmental commissions do not have the um, authority to make land use decisions. So what the law requires, so there will be five to seven members appointed. Um, they're appointed to three year terms. They're staggering, so not everyone um, expire, term expires at the same time. There's two alternates appointed, which are not voting members regularly, only if um, you know an environmental commissioner cannot uh, be there for, for whatever reason, then they can vote. And there can also, one of the members also serves on the planning board. So there's a liaison to the planning board. That's a very important position. Um, you want some, you want a planning board member that hopefully really cares about the environment also, that is dedicated to the commission, to attending your meetings, and to, and to being your link with the, um, with the planning board, and also with the township committee. What we suggest to environmental commissions is find, if possible, find your friend. Know who your friend is on that township committee and who your friends or friends are on that planning board that you can have open conversations with and um, get good feedback that, that is reliable feedback. Because not always is the answer going to be yes um, with something that you want to do for your community, as I'm sure you've all run into. Sometimes you got to keep at it and it's good to have a friend in, in, um, in those roles. So uh, what we often get asked, what is the difference between an environmental commission, an environmental committee, and a green team? An environmental commission is, is um, put into power by ordinance, uh, meaning that it is a legal arm of government, just like the planning, just like the planning board is, except for that it's advisory. Once an environmental commission is in place in a town and the members are appointed, if a town wants to disband, officially disband their environmental commission, they also have to do that by by repealing the ordinance. So it's it's like two readings um, in order to do that. Where with an environmental committee, it's put into into force by a resolution, just like a green team is. Um, in many ways, they they can function and they do a lot of the same work. And I'm sure you'll see a lot of green team members or also members of their environmental commissions. Um, so they function a lot like, but the main difference is, and environmental commissions once they do a uh, natural resource inventory or an environmental resource inventory, then they have the um, they're a allowed to officially review site plans as they come into your planning board, the applications, and and to uh, offer advice on them. Things they like, things they don't like, do they meet their ordinances, but environmental commissions in an official capacity have the right to review site plans. Um, like I said, what the law requires is rolling three-year terms, uh, open public meetings. They operate just like any other arm of government meetings. The, the meetings are all advertised. The agenda should be posted. Um, another thing that is really important is just like with planning boards, members have to be careful 
that they're not emailing each other. Like you can have a group email on, um, you know, we're having this event or whatever. But if they're talking about site plans for a specific application or something that the um, Joint Environmental Commission might be voting on, you really want to make sure that just like anyone else that's on a planning board or township committee, you, what your the conversations you're carrying on on um, email or even in a group, these can not only um, should you not have a quorum, but they can also be uh, pulled if there was ever legal action on an application. So we just warn people to be careful. Are they still can hear me. I'll get. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Usually people can hear me. Probably be better hearing me without the mic. So um, some of the things that environmental commission study is you're looking at when you're looking at site plans. You're looking at stormwater runoff. You're looking at where's where are these um, homes or businesses. Where is their water source? Um, the, what are the protections that would be in place for buffer areas? Um, it, what type of planning are they doing? Is it going to be, it should be native habitat? Um, are there other things that need to be addressed on the property? For instance, are there invasive species that should be removed? What are the noise levels? A lot of towns now are looking at lighting. Um, what, what are the lighting, at the, is it a business? Lots of municipalities have mega warehouses coming in, what is this going to do to traffic in your community? What's the lighting going to look like? What's the parking areas going to look like? What's the stormwater runoff going to look like? Um, are there going to be sufficient buffers in place? So if there are residents um, near there that they're not going to be having um, so many negative impacts, but also what ordinances are there in your town that if a mega warehouse wants to come in and it's going to be adjacent to residents, what ordinances in your town are going to deal with that? Is it your zoning? Is it setbacks? These are the things that um, people are shocked when they find out that something wants to be built in their township that is just going to change it forever and that their town really doesn't have the ordinances in place to stop it, even if they want to. So um, these, these are things that environmental commissions, along with green teams, need to be looking at. Um, create An environmental commission also creates an open space index. So what, what properties in your town would you, would you want to see protected in the future, whether it's for active recreation or for habitat? Um, so they'll be making a list of things that are already protected and, and, here, and they'll be advising the township on uh, other areas that they should be looking to in the future. These are all really important when it comes time to be doing your master plan, which is a vision for your, for your township in the years to come. Also, in addition to um, creating an open space index, how will you get that open space preserved? Many times municipalities, um, they, they will have a dedicated tax for preserving open space or farmland, whatever. So um, environmental commissions can be very helpful with advising on, on how much money would be needed, along with what properties they would want to see um, as for higher protection levels. And um, I was talking about the environmental resource inventory. Basically what that is, is that's the first level of, it says what is in your municipality. It's not a vision like the master plan is, it's what is there. Um, what, what species are there, where, you're, where the people live, where your business districts are, if there were ever companies or gas stations or whatever that have um, polluted areas. It would also show that it's all taken from public records. Um, a lot of towns now, because the, um, the the technology is so much better, they're they're beginning to do these environmental resource inventories on their own. But you can also get people from your township. They don't have to be a um, an environmental commission member. If you have a 
professor or librarians or someone that's really good with technology and mapping, you can get those people to help you also. But lots of times the town still will want to hire a consultant, even if they pull it all together. But once the environmental resource inventory is in place, then that lays the foundation for your master plan, which is the vision for your township in the, in the coming years. They should be being reviewed every eight to 10 years. You hear towns sometimes don't review their master plans for 20, 25 years, eight, eight to 10 years. Um, by law, it's supposed to be reviewed every 10 years, but, um, and then once you have your master plan, which all towns do, then you're looking at your ordinances. How are you going to implement that master plan? Put development where you want it, keep it away from where you want it, protect the critical habitat, protect your water supplies, protect your headwaters. Um, the, these are the things that your ordinances will do. And also um, the ordinance is what does a community look like when it's built? What are the setbacks? What type of, are you going to have trees required? Uh, are they going to be native trees? How much open space is going to be in those communities? These are all the things that are done by ordinances so that when applications come into your town, this is what the, the planning board needs to vote on. And um, another thing that environmental commissions do now is um, recently the, the stormwater regulations were changed. Um, all towns have to meet an MS4, per, for, MS4 permit. There's a lot of education required with towns meeting that. They get credits. So this is something that environmental commissions, I know also green teams are very involved with this also. And um, getting organized, it's like everything else. Environmental commission will have a mission statement, bylaws. They list their goals. They do an annual report, or they should every year. Uh, we strongly suggest that an environmental commission member attend every um, council meeting just so that they know you're there. If you have a suggestion to make, um, this is how you build relationships. And then it's important when you do your annual report because you're going to be asking for money to budget it for the next year. So this is how um, you show the value of the commission. And um, these are just different types of events like you're doing here tonight, having an event with education, hosting speakers. Sometimes there'll be um, very specific things going on in your town. Like I know I was just talking with someone here who's going to be starting a community garden, a green team member. It's a great way to get people in your um, town involved and a great way to do education. So even though Ann Jack, we, we don't do community gardens per se, but um, we do grants that, that support community gardens and, and other types of, um, especially green infrastructure. And uh, that's really, that's it. Making your goals, what I usually suggest is having at least six short-term goals a year and three to five long-term goals. Um, making sure that everyone on the committee is involved because there's nothing worse than if you're going and you're not involved and um, you, want every, you want everyone to bring their area of expertise. So, I'm just gonna go through here. I think as I was talking, I was covering most of the um, things here. Oh, another thing is with ANJAC, and this is also for um, green teams, we have a selection if you go on our website which is anjack.org um, you can go into resources and we have game all types of games a big water wheel with, with the questions you just supply whatever you're going to be giving out as a prize a pinball and it, it's for all ages but if, you know if you get the kids um, coming up you'll get the parents and they usually have more fun answering the questions and the kids. So uh, feel free to get in touch with us. All our, um, we do a quarterly, it's called An the Anjack Report. Um, they're online, so you can just go on there and get them. All of our webinars that we do are recorded. They're also all online. So anything pretty much that you want training for, um, it, 
you're going to find a YouTube on it on there. And if you don't, just email us. It's right on there, info at anjack.org. And we'll be happy to um, get you what you need. So that's it. Again, my name is Cheryl Reardon. And I'm C. Reardon at anjack.org. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Okay?